have a lot of negative self-talk, no self-love. And there was one day where I, I had just left my husband. We're all co-creating our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are definitely things we can't control, but there's a lot that we can. And most of that is what is going on with you. So you can control your own thoughts. And it was like this switch flipped where I realized like no one else is here like to, to protect me from myself. If I'm attacking myself with my own thoughts, who's going to stop me? Like there is nobody but me and I need to protect myself because if I don't like, I'm just going to destroy myself. Sun is coming up, are you ready to go? We can take a ride, we can take it slow. Yeah. Well, welcome back to the show. I am so excited because I just had like an impromptu, let's drive to LA, let's have an air one moment. I texted my friend, Amy Bach, and she's joining us on the show. So Amy, first and foremost, welcome to the On to the Road. Like I'm so honored to be here with you. I'm so honored. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Secondly, On the Road, uh, it's so important for me to remind everyone that self-love is the devotion to your individuality. It's not the devotion to what other people think you are, or what they are telling you you're supposed to be. So I would love for you to introduce yourself, how you want the people to know you and, um, all that magic and in between. So my name is Amy Bach. I'm a yoga and meditation teacher and a mindfulness coach. And I'm also a writer. I have a blog called Mind Body Badass. It was actually just changed from Infinite Embers. We have a new name that I'm really excited about. Um, and I've been working in this for, it's been about a 10 year journey of my own healing. And through that, I've learned so many things about how mental and physical health are connected and how important it is to heal both together. Um, and really how that relates to self-love is you can't have self-love until you're you know, truly feeling good mm. because that's like going to be the first obstacle is if you're in pain or if you're sick, like that is a far more immediate need than, than working on yourself and advancing and, and being able to show up in the world. I believe that sirens come at the time when we're supposed to listen. So you keep speaking, girl. <laughs> we're dropping truth already. And then we had this like premier expert on meditation come talk to us one day. His name is Lauren Roche. And he's written a ton of books and he's like the leading pioneer in meditation here in America. And he, he said something that like completely changed my life because I remember him drawing on a, a whiteboard and he was like, okay, so when you meditate, right? Like you start out trying to be super present and you're maybe focusing on a mantra and then your mind starts to wander. And then you catch yourself like, oh crap, my mind is wandering and you bring yourself back to the attention of whatever you started out with. And he said, this whole circle, that is the process of meditation. Like you're not trying to get your mind to be silent. There is no end goal. Mm. The goal is just to be with that cycle. And that floored me. There's actually like a picture somebody took in my mouth. It's just like on the floor. Cause I, I had thought for the longest time that it was supposed to be about you know, completely silencing your mind and like being super Zen. And, yeah. um, it really changed it for me. It was like, no, that's really more of a self inquiry. You're really taking time to just be with your mind and like whatever comes up, you just allow it to come up and then you allow it to go. And in that process, you're holding space and you start to be able to realize like what types of thought patterns you're having and in that process, that's really the only way you can start to change your thoughts. Mm. So I couldn't really change my pain at the time, but I was like, well, I can at least start to work on all my like mental problems. I can start to be less anxious with the pain. I can let it have less control over me, at least how it affects me in my, in my own happiness. And so I started meditating every single day and it has completely like changed who I am like really um because like I said you're holding that space to to look at your thoughts and and in looking at my thoughts I realized a lot of them had to go <laughs> <laughs> by bad thoughts by thoughts <laughs> <laughs> so what was like the 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 thought that like kept on resurfacing that you were like no no this has to leave 
I can actually remember like a specific moment, a specific meditation where, because I've always been really hard on myself and I have a lot of negative self-talk, no self-love. And there was one day where I, I had just left my husband, which was a really huge, like, decision that was very painful because it wasn't like a bad marriage and we were still really good friends and I just felt like I needed to take space to be by myself and to go on a journey by myself and I was beating myself up for it though because I had caused so much pain and I had lost so much both physically and like my sense of home and and I was alone and I was lying on the floor in this meditation and all of a sudden I started picturing somebody in front of me saying all the words that I was saying to myself in my head. And then I saw myself as a little child cowering in front of this figure who was just yelling at her. And, and there was this little small voice inside of me that was like, are you going to let them talk to you like that? Like, are you going to let this be okay? Are you going to let this continue to happen? Like, are you going to let them attack you? And I realized that I needed to step up in that moment and, and protect myself. And it was like this switch flipped where I realized like no one else is here like to, to protect me from myself. If I'm attacking myself with my own thoughts, who's going to stop me? Like there is nobody but me and I need to protect myself because if I don't like, I'm just going to destroy myself. And, and that really changed how I started to love myself. And, and I think that is self-love is, it's really like an act of revolution because when you start to love yourself, because the world doesn't want you to love yourself because when you love yourself, you're in your power and other people can't control you. And the more that you love yourself, the easier it is to, to love other people because you're not holding on to that bitterness. Mm. You're not like holding on to this negativity that you're then going to throw out at other people. You're really able to, to be in love and that's what the world needs more of. So I think it's so important. I now have, it's my mission to, teach people meditation so that they can start to love themselves so that they can go through that own process themselves, start to like figure out what thoughts can I control and change and which ones can I say goodbye to? Mm. Maybe because so often we're the person standing in our own way. <sighs> so true. And it's, it's because it's really, it's hard to like to look in the mirror and, sit and take responsibility sure. for your own part in it. I mean, we're all co-creating our lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are definitely things we can't control, but there's a lot that we can. And most of that is what is going on with you. So you can control your own thoughts. Mm. Um, and in that way, it just becomes so much easier to like let go of small things because it's not worth your mental energy. Amen. Preach, 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 preach. Okay. So um, I think that that's the perfect time for us to play our first road trip game. Now, I love playing We're Not Really Strangers uh, with my guests, and I got the self-reflection pack, so there's some cute little silver cards. You just have to choose whatever one you feel called to choose. You're going to read it, as long as it's not red. If it's red, then you have to find a new one. But uh, read the question, and we're both going to answer it. They're, they can get real crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm excited. So flip the other side. Okay. Boom. <laughs> Whose life seems most fulfilling to me? What does their life look like? I think this is great. This is a good question because it's kind of like... Exactly what we were talking yeah. about. <laughs> uh, I yes. promise I didn't plant it. No, I know because I looked. I was like, I'm going to choose whatever card calls to me. Okay. This is funny because I want to say like my own life seems the most fulfilling to me. I don't want to necessarily, there's nobody whose life I'm like idolizing myself or striving for. I'm looking for the best version of my life. And what that looks like for me is completely showing up in my power and 
not getting in my own way and 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 I think finding purpose through through spreading this message and through through writing through teaching um, all of that is so fulfilling to me I think it's important to find fulfillment with where you're at and then mm-hmm. From that place, you can start to grow. But if you're hating on yourself or hating on your life, that's coming from such like a negative space. You're not going to be able to expand it from there. Mm. Wow. Mic drop. So it was a complex answer. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it was it was the perfect answer for, for this show. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I can just like be real and say who is life am I idolizing I say that right now like and what's gotten me into trouble you know because um I'm just coming off of a a launch that I've now extended because I want more people to join and being very transparent about that on my uh Instagram today but I uh I really have been idolizing a lot of like online coaches who have been doing it for such a long time. My friend Catherine said Kina is someone that like I love dearly, but I had to put her on mute on Instagram because the trip like I would get triggered whenever I would see her launches and the success that she has. And I'm just like, why can't I have it? You know, and and I just actually listened to an episode of her show, which I've been on, that she was talking about how we have to we have to come to our manifestations and our desires with with this energy of neutrality. There is no actual energy around having it or not having it, because either way attracts the opposite or pulls in what you don't want, um, which I, it's like a whole other episode in itself that we could talk about that. But really, like. I've been idolizing these online coaches who have these massive launches, you know, because for me right now, a big piece of my life is like financial security that in the online coaching space where 90% of my time is spent creating free content like this show and like my Instagram and TikTok and you know exactly like it. It's like, it's like, okay, well, I have to make money and I have to pay my bills and and I don't have any other job except this job. And um, it would just, I would love to snap my fingers and be like, oh, finally, it's here. But I know that, as Amy said, it's all happening when it's meant to. Well, Amy, this has been so much fun. And I'm so grateful for you being a guest on the show and for all of your knowledge. And if you're listening to this, know that it is a sign that meditation is time to, it's time to meditate. It's time to take Amy's course. So remember, you're worth it, you deserve it, and you are not alone. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Paul. Yeah!